Hello and welcome to episode 24 of the Kingfisher Knits podcast. My name is Madeline and I'm talking to you from my home in Zurich where I live with my husband and my two small children. And uh, This is a podcast about my adventures in knitting. Um, I would like to, I think I've remembered to say at this time, say a big warm welcome to all of you. Thank you very much for stopping by to watch my podcast and chat about knitting with me. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much. And if you are a new viewer, thank you very much for checking me out. Um, it is April and I believe it's the 26th of April. Can't really believe that we're already nearly at the end of April, but I think less said about that, the better. I have a fairly um, juicy show for you today. It always seems to happen that I think I have nothing to talk about and then as I start gathering the stuff together I'm like oh and I forgot that and I forgot that and so plenty of things. I wanted to say um, at the top of the episode before I forget that we do have a giveaway going on at the moment. This is in the Ravelry group so a little bit of admin <laughs> The show notes for this podcast, that meaning links for everything that I talk about, can be found down below this video on YouTube in the description box below. There you have the links to all the places you can find me, my website, Instagram and the like. Um, and you also have a link to our Ravelry group, Ravelry group, uh, which is the Kingfisher Knits group on, uh, Kingfisher Knits group, sorry, on Ravelry. And that is where I also have a thread for every episode with the show notes. And that's also where we hold our cows and giveaways and general chit chat. There is also an introductions thread there. So should you want to pop on over there, you can read about some of our members and you can introduce yourself too. Um, I was mentioning the giveaway. So we do have a giveaway on at the moment. This is for um, the Knit Crate. The people at Knit Crate sent me um, their April crate. I reviewed it on last week, uh, last week, last um, episode. So episode 23, should you be interested. And I'm giving away the yarn that came with that. Um, so just a quick reminder, in case you haven't seen that episode, um, that is, this is two skeins of a DK weight yarn. It is actually a gradient yarn. It's not variegated, so it goes from the lighter to the darker color through the whole length of the skein. So it's a long, you know, um, it's a gradient. Yeah, let's just stop at that. So there are two skeins of this. It's DK weight, it's 100 grams. I think it's 220 meters, 215 meters for 100 grams. So those two skeins are up for grabs. Um, if you go on and uh, reply to the thread, the giveaway thread in the Ravelry group. Um, I decided to keep it open um, and not draw for it yet because I actually wouldn't be able to post it this coming week anyway. So this way round, I will draw for it um, when I sort of, a shorter length of time uh, before when I will be able to post that package out. So if you didn't enter already and you're interested in winning that yarn, please do head over there. Um, there you will also find our ongoing cowls, which is uh, one cowl at the moment, which is the mixed base cowl. Again, I spoke about that last time. You can go over there and check out that for all the details. I'm not going to be talking about that cowl um, this week in particular because I spoke about it a bit last week. And so we'll catch up on that um, another time. But if you're interested, just pop over there and take a look if you, be, um, if you want to know what that's all about. I hope I do have the window open because it's it's quite muggy. It's, we've had pretty warm weather here, um, I think in most of Europe, Northern Europe, um, for this time of year. It's changed, the weather's on the change a bit here. I'm British, so we have to talk about the weather. Um, but it also means it's become a bit muggy, so I have to keep the window open, even though it's not that warm. So I really hope that there won't be too much, um, what's the word, ambient noise. So the first uh, whip that I'm going to talk to you about is a whip that I haven't shown to you for a long time. Um, I haven't worked on it that much either, but I got it out because I finished a couple of things um, this last week and I wanted to cast on something new, which I did, but anyway. Um, but I also thought, well, before going crazy and casting on a bunch of new things, I really should pull out something old, work on it a bit, see if I'm in the mood. I'm not someone who pushes myself to work on whips. Um, so I'm a knitting designer, so when I have deadline knitting, then of course I, have, I make myself work on it because I have to get it done. When it's not deadline knitting, I don't push myself to work on, on knits, but every now and then I try and pull them out and see if I'm in the mood, if I can finish them off. 
I'm not normally one for whipping, uh, ripping out a whip. If I kind of get sick of it, I will try and push through and finish it, unless it's something that was, you know, hardly started. Um, so yeah, I decided to pull out my Recoleta cardigan. Recoleta it would probably be a more accurate pronunciation. And this is by Hohi, the lovely Hohi Locatelli. This is her, the front page of the pattern. It's been folded and in my project bag. But you can see that it has this gorgeous lace collar. It is written as a worsted weight pattern. I'm knitting it in an Aran weight yarn. So here we have it here. I actually was knitting that a bit this morning, so it's not even in the bag. Um, I am using the Plucky Knitter yarn. This is their Traveller Aran base. As you can see there. Oh gosh, what a block like. There we go. Which is uh, a superwash merino silk and yak blend. It's quite amazing. This I'm using the Wonderlust colorway. This is now a discontinued base and I actually picked it up when they had um, a sale. I think they had a 30% discount on this yarn so I thought I already had a couple of skeins in my stash so I knew it was beautiful and I'd knit a hat in the sport weight of this yarn which I don't think is discontinued. Um, anyway so I uh, ran over and scooped up this this yarn. So I have I bought five skeins for this project, which I'm hoping will be enough. I do actually have six skeins of this because I have a skein which I had bought originally the same colour. Um, so it's this beautiful, it is a grey, um, but it's one of those greys that definitely has some warmth to it and like, you know, I mean, I wouldn't really, I've seen browner greys, but there must be some brown or something in there that um, brings it uh, to be a warm, well, still, you know, dark grey. And this is where I, okay, it's a little heart tricky project to show off I always find, partly because it's lace, so it all looks wrinkly all the time, but um, this is the back of the cardigan. Let me just move my project bag out of the way so I don't feel like I'm banging into it all the time. This is the back of the cardigan. So these are the tops, let me, if I hold it at the top of the two shoulders, there we go. This is the back. Obviously when it blocks out, you can see it more. I'm reluctant to pull it too much because I don't want to slide it off the needles. But it's this beautiful, beautiful lace. Then the sleeve caps will work in um, stocking stitch as are the sort of the side panels that run down either side of the body, as you can see there. My stitch markers here, sorry, left and right, you know, the same mold. Um, I was using them to mark the decreases and I'm now taking them out as I'm marking my increases that I'm making down here. Anyway, and then the front, at the front, so then you have the collar, sorry, around here, which is it's all works, you know, seamlessly in one piece. That's the collar, and that's going down the front here as well. So each of the collar pieces are the same lace as the, as the back. Again, it's a bit wrinkled there. Apologies, but it's the same pattern. It's also quite heavy because obviously it's worked in iron weight. So I am working this, I believe, oh, uh, look at that, I've got a needle gauge right there. I believe these are 4.5 millimeter needles. They are. I'm using my Knit Pro Symphonies, which I really, really love. And given the um, slippiness of this yarn with the, with the very soft yak and the silk, I definitely knew I wanted to use wood needles for this. Even though it's lace, they're not very complicated lace. There's never more than uh, knit two together or SSKs. Um, I don't find these needles particularly blunt, and um, it's uh, there's certainly nothing in this that you would need, you know, an, a lace sharp needle for. Anyway, so yeah, I'm really, really loving working on this again. It's at the point now, yeah, where I think I've got one more um, hip increase to do, and then it's just knit down to the start the hem. Um, this garment is designed to be quite a long garment, so, excuse me, it is, I believe, um, just in my memory says well, I think it's something like 41 centimetres, I'm sorry, I don't know what that is in inches, uh, 41 centimetres from, you know, from the underarm, and for me, I mean, she wears it as a long length cardigan, uh, for me, I'm a little worried about running out of yarn. I had considered knitting my sleeves first and then finishing, but I think that the length is what's gonna make or break this garment for me. So if I'm gonna run out of yarn, I would rather run out on the sleeves and have them um, a bit shorter than um, have the wrong length. So I'm gonna keep trying it on, and I think at the moment I'm gonna probably shorten it by a couple of centimeters at least, 
I have a couple of sweaters that are around 38 centimeters in length total and they're quite good but yeah something like that so probably gonna bring I mean cardigan it could be a little bit longer but I don't think 41 is gonna look right on me anyway I'm just gonna keep trying it on and perhaps if next time I show it to you I've done enough progress to make it worth trying on I can try it on and show it um, show it to you but there we are it's a um, really, really beautiful project, which I'm super, super in love with. I think it's so beautiful and elegant that I don't know, like some, I think like I don't know when I'd wear it because I tend to wear not very embellished things, um, but I also love it. So maybe this will just be so beautiful that even though it looks fancy, I won't care and I'll just wear it with my jeans and be very happy. So I will put that back in its project bag. Oh, I didn't say, I am alternating skeins. Um, so this is worked back and forth in the flat. So I'm alternating skeins every two rows. Um, my yarns look pretty similar. I'm not noticing any clear striping from the alternating skeins, but I just felt more comfortable um, doing that. It's still a hand dyed yarn after all. So I'm just gonna have a sip of my iced coffee. I didn't say before, I don't really do a what I'm wearing segment, but I am wearing knitwear today. So the color is not right. This is a much um, deeper, richer burgundy. So a bit less red, a bit more towards the pinky purple. But anyway, um, this is my not so faded sweater. So I use the so faded pattern by Andrea Maori. Maybe you can see there the garter detail. It's not really, cameras really struggle to pick up reds, I find in particular. Um, anyway, so it's knit per, as per the pattern, but in one color. And this is also the Plucky Knitter. This is their Oxford base. This is the Oxford 1.0, now they have the 2.0, which is which was and still is a 75-25 non-superwash merino cashmere blend fingering weight. So I got this out of three skeins. I had a little ball left over. Anyway, love this sweater, I wear it to death. I'm really worried about the elbows. I mean, here it looks really thin when you put it like that, but it looks thin wherever you put your elbow. But when I take my arm out, you have the little wrinkle from where the elbow was. And I'm constantly paranoid that I'm going to uh, wear through them. And probably in one day I will. Um, I do have a bit of the yarn left, probably enough to be able to darn that if necessary. But just, I love this sweater and it just made me think when all of this is done and I actually have another couple of garment projects planned, but I really need another fingering weight sweater because I really wear it a lot and I love it, so. They take longer to knit, but I need them, so. Okay, on from one Hoki Locatelli um, garment whip to another. And this is my Radiate sweater, which you have seen every week since I started it. So just a little reminder or um, introduction for new viewers. I am knitting this using the Wool Kitchen yarn. Let me pull out the tag. Wool Kitchen, it, she is an indie, Yarn, oops, yarn dyer based in the UK and I'm using her Blue Face Leicester Superwash DK base 100 grams 200 meters. I am using the Heterochromia colorway and I used Geek up around as the contrast color for the yolk. yolk. And that's how much I had left from one skein. I haven't weighed it actually. It definitely is less than half a skein maybe 30 grams. I'm really bad at that. I always underestimate the yarn I have left. So I always think it's it weighs less than it actually does. Anyway, totally uninteresting fact. So last time I showed this to you, I didn't, I don't tend to put, I always forget to put progress keepers on where I well else was when I showed things to you. I was definitely beyond the separating for the sleeves. And now I have finished the body. So, um, this is a top-down, quick run and top-down circular yoke sweater with this um, slip stitch is how you achieve this, a slip stitch design. Um, and then the rest is knit and stocking stitch in one colour. Um, this yarn, I have alternated skeins throughout, that's the striping that you can see, but there is still uh, pooling and flashing. And um, after my original start of this, I'm not really, I'm not a pooly flashy fan. I think it can work sometimes. Not really flashing, pooling, 
Um, like spiral striping can work for me on, you know, um, what are they called? Hats. <coughs> Sorry. Hats. On hats and socks and small items. It can work on a sweater for me if it if it's sort of consistent so it's got a match on the body and the sleeves and that doesn't happen because the circumference is different. Anyway, this yarn, as I said, I don't have any left in the hank, is um, like a whole hank of yarn is dyed, all except for one small portion is dyed in this tonal grey and then all these bits that you see here is this cream with the flex is a bit which was not dyed and has then got these speckles on top. So it's always going to pool and flash because that bit of um, colour is in the same position on the skein the whole way around. And when you change stitch count, like I did for shaping the waist, that's going to change. I did stop and think, maybe I should have knit this straight down, but I put in back darts, which you can't really see here. I tried it on. Um, I will give my, um, I stab myself with the high high shops. I will give my um, full assessment of the back darts once I finish this and I can try it on a shirt to you. I have tried it on already. I did back darts, um, they are here and here to um, decrease stitches down my back. I always find sweaters are really baggy there. Um, and then I also did some increases again. So I think probably I'm gonna find out that uh, this definitely helped, but it probably wasn't quite enough. I could do more, but it's a learning process. So the stitch count was always going to change and that's always gonna change the pattern of the pooling and the flashing. So on the one hand, I'm not someone who loves or goes for this effect. On the other hand, I love this yarn. I love this pattern. And I feel like, and, and you know, I was gonna make a sweater with this yarn. I have to embrace the fact that that's what it's gonna look like. So um, I'm hoping it will, I'm already at peace with it. And I'm hoping that then after that fact, it will just continue to grow on me. Anyway, all this to say, I finished the body. So you can see there's a bit more shaping here. And this um, pattern actually doesn't call for you to go up a needle size for the ribbing. I said before, my ribbing is not very good. Um, I don't have great gauge when I do, when I knit ribbing. So I decided I was using a four millimeter needle for the pattern and um, I decided to go down just a, quarter, like just a quarter of a millimeter, so to the 3.75 millimeter. So if I remember, so I think four, yeah, so that's a, I went from a size six to a size five. So it is down one needle size in US. But like with ribbing, I would normally go from a four to a 3.5, for example. But um, I get this is meant to be not pull in with the ribbing. It's meant to just be like the finish of the, of the garment. And you can see here, it's slightly pulling in at the moment. But I know when with block and wear that this will end up being the same as the garment. And I just, I know that if I'd knit this with a four millimeter, compared to the stocking stitch before, it would have looked really sloppy. Like I'm already not particularly happy with how it looks here, but it would have been much worse. And I also agree that probably a small needle wasn't in keeping with the idea. Anyway, I love this little flash on the bind off of the color. So yeah, this is the body done. I did start the sleeve, first sleeve here, just a little tiny bit. Here I'm just sort of winging it um, I had a little bit of yarn uh, that I had kept from the skein I originally started. So I started with that, um, the skein that I had finished, um, that I was using when I was knitting this part up here. I kept a bit of that, so I started the sleeve with that. Um, and then I'm just alternating, I alternated it with another skein and now I'm on to yet another skein. So it's been, a, there's a million little ends in here for the beginning of this sleeve, but this is just, I had all these little balls of yarn I wanted to use up. So, first sleeve is started. I am now on Sleeve Island officially, and yeah, this will be serving as my round and around stocking stitch um, knitting when I want to do just only that. Okay, I feel like I've talked a lot about that now. And I just think, I wanted to talk a bit about the, you know, the pooling and what have you. Uh, some people love it, some people hate it, and I wanted to explain you know, why this yarn was doing it that way, so that, you know, if you're somebody who uh, knows that you would hate that effect, then you know, um, you know, a certain type of yarn possibly to avoid, to 
that effect. And if you love it, then that's great. I have to say, this particular yarn, I, I mean, I really love this yarn base. It's so wonderful. It feels fantastic to knit with. Um, so I'm really, really loving it. If you're someone who still likes the kind of look of this yarn, but would like less evident um, flashing and pooling, then you can, she has a color called Champagne Supernova, where the, the full skein is not dyed. You only have the speckles in one region. So if you alternate skeins of that, um, the effect is less prominent because here it's more prominent because you have both you have these sections which contrast a lot against the rest of the color of the skein. If the rest of the skein is all cream, um, plain cream, then it doesn't make such an effect. And uh, Katie from inside number 23 knit a sweater uh, using that yarn and the effect is beautiful. That's living in my wonderful, geeky, a periodic table project bag, which is my sweater knitting project bag. And I love it so much. Okay. I have one more whip that I'm currently working a lot on. I am not going to share it in detail. It is a design. And it is a design that I still, although I started knitting it myself, I am still considering submitting it. So I cannot really show it to you. Um, but it is... I do want to talk about the project bag it's knitting in and it's knitting in, living in, and the yarn that I'm using. This is a beautiful project bag from um, the lovely So Sweet Violet. This is a project bag which I was actually sent by Jules um, for as part of the Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted last November, and it's divine. So I will just put my project out there so I can also show you the inside of this bag. So this is her little trying to see it's white there. Um, label, it's actually it's stamped onto the fabric. It's got two lovely pockets here. And there. I'm not very good at showing bags off apparently. There we go. Two pockets there. And I also love that it has this little ring attached to the inside of the bag there. And this is one of those rings you can actually, I haven't bothered trying to open it, but you can. They hinge and open these ones. There we go. So you can open it and put um, what are they called? Progress creepers and uh, stitch markers and the like on there. Love this project bag. Okay, so I am knitting. It is a shawl, and I am using this lovely, lovely yarn. It's coming out a little bit more blue, as teals always do here. It is a bit more green than that. Um, and this is. The wonderful Malabrigo Rios yarn. This is the colour Teal Feather. Malabrigo Rios is a worsted weight yarn. It gives you 210 yards for 100 grams. It's a pure superwash bruno from Peru. And um, I have four skeins of this yarn. So that's, uh, yeah, I already used one, uh, the majority of one, sorry. I already caked up the second and I have two more. My plan is to probably use up all of it and this is going to be one big cuddle of a shawl. I'm not going to show you the right side of the shawl for now. I am going to hold it up for you because I wanted to show, well I can show you this beautiful, this is, this is on the right side, or one bit of the right side, beautiful little progress keeper. So with it, with this bag, uh, Jules included a little set of uh, Progress Keeper and a few stitch markers. So I'm using that on this project too. They just match perfectly. So this is the Progress Keeper, which is this beautiful little bird. And from the wrong side, I can show you the other little stitch markers. So that's a little flower. I love this one. It's a feather. Oh, there we go. It's caught on the yarn. No, it's not. Okay. Then we've got a bigger flower here. And this beautiful little teardrop here. And together they just make the loveliest set. And they came on this beautiful little um, gold, golden ring. Gosh, Jules is so classy, isn't she? Anyway. Many things I am not, but it's really beautiful. And it's one of those cases where the whole package is just bringing me joy. Um, so anyway, I will, I'm knitting this, um, as I said, it's worsted weight yarn and I'm knitting this on 4.5 millimeter higher, higher sharps. I've been enjoying it a lot. 
I mean, I have posted a couple of pictures where you can see little bits of it on, on Instagram. And so those of you who know or have been looking at that will know it does involve some seed stitch. And I'm really a fan of seed stitch. Sorry, that's my chart that I've printed out, which lives in there. So that was just a quick whistle top, whistle, whistle stop tour of um, one of my latest whips. I did finish a couple of things this week. One of them I cannot share with you. Um, you'll see that at some point in the future. And the other one is the shawl that I was knitting and designing um, for my great aunt. I finished it and I am really, really in love with it. Um, so I'm just gonna show it off to you here in full and then show it to you closer up. I hope that's entering fully in, I can't quite see. Anyway, yes, I think it is. So that is the full shawl. You can see um, that the shape that I have used um, means that it's gonna be very easy for her to wear, that it's gonna stay on nicely around the shoulders. Um, it's very simple um, with just making use of these beautiful increase lines as a feature. Um, I switched from the first yarn color that I used, this yarn here, so it's all fingering weight sock yarn. This is Hello Gorgeous by Lolo Did It in her everyday sock, which is a 75-25 merino nylon. And then I have striping into the second color that I used. Um, and that was Lavender Sunset from Fondant Fiber. That is actually a 100% superwash BFL, I believe. It might be a BFL nylon, but I'm pretty sure. I'm like 99% sure that it's just BFL. Um, there are some garter ridges and then this was finished with an applied border so that's worked uh, perpendicular to um, the direction of the shawl knitting and works serves therefore to bind off the the project so it's a simple simple lace but very effective I think and one that still works with this sort of slightly variegated speckled yarn the whole um, Top of the project has an I-cord edge. Um, the bottom edge is not an I-cord because that's not what looks good with the lace in my opinion. That's just got a nice lacy edge which doesn't curl. Um, at least not once blocked. So this is called the Inanda shawl. I have written up the pattern. Um, it's being tech edited and it will go into testing soon. Um, I think, so I designed this to not be too big. My great aunt is very small, she's very slight, and she wants to wear this as a proper classic shawl, you know, around the shoulders, just like that while she's, you know, sitting in her chair. Um, potentially, you could cross it over and she'll probably wear it with one of her many beautiful brooches. And she asked for this, especially something that was light, um, not too heavy, um, not too fancy, and um, in pinks and mauves. So I think that this, I showed, she saw this game that it had this yellow in and she liked it a lot as well. Um, this particular shawl that I knit used, um, I think between 450 and 500 meters of yarn. And I'm currently talking with my tech editor about how I've written a way in which you can calculate, you can um, track your own yarn usage and decide at which point you stop to knit the border to make sure basically you have enough so you can make it customizable that way. Um, and whether we think that that's clear enough or I should just go ahead and explicit, you know, put in explicitly some different sizes. Anyway, this size though, which is bigger than what I would call a shawlette, but a perfect sort of, you know, not big, just sort of normal, sort of ordinary, simple little shawl size is, um, is more than one skein of fingering weight yarn. But that's what I used, you know, I used up some, I used up some leftover yarn, this yarn I used in my snow melt shawl actually last year. So yeah, this is the Inanda shawl and I will update on it um, as and when the pattern um, is available. But I will be gifting it, giving it to my aunt um, in about a month, maybe a little bit sooner than that. Hopefully I will be able to see her and if not, I will bring it with me. I'm planning to go to the UK and um, I will send it to her. So. That is all the uh, whips and FOs that I had to show to you uh, this week. 
I have a little pile of yarn to the side of me because I have not been showing you acquisitions for a few times around now. Sorry, you've seen that skin already. That's the Malibrigo. We are so moving that out the way. Um, and so I wanted to show you some things that I um, have bought over the last probably couple of months. I mean, it's it's not that much, I think. I do have one other thing coming, which was meant to be delivered today. And I was you know, looking out for the postman because just because once I was doing this slot with all the um, acquisitions, then I wanted to put it all together in one, but he doesn't seem to have come by yet. So I just have to show you the things I already have, which is fine. So the first thing I want to show you is, um, so I had heard of Berenvolle, or Beren, yeah, Berenvolle is how you should pronounce it. Um, she's, uh, she's German. And um, I've often seen the beautiful yarn that she makes. I followed her on Instagram and um, it was probably a couple of months ago or six weeks ago where I just saw an Instagram post that she was closing down that's it, not dyeing yarn anymore. And I thought, well, I've never had any of her yarn. And, you know, knowing that she's an indie dyer, there isn't a ton of her yarn around. And no one's gonna, I mean, not nobody, people will be de-stashing her yarn probably, but you know, now that she's stopped dyeing, people are not gonna de-stash her yarn. So I had a bit of a oh, moment, and then I saw she was doing one last update. And I thought, well, I'll go and see if I can grab a skein. And she had a feature on her website, which I mean is basically to avoid cart jacking. There are no, you know, ideal systems that would seem to avoid this. And this one seems to work that probably once people have put the yarn in their cart, it remains protected for some time. So when you see a listing on her website, if it's not fully sold out yet, but there's none available because it's all in people's carts, it would say, you know, a countdown clock, like 10 minutes or one minute, whatever, until the yarn was available again. So I'm guessing people had it in their carts, they hadn't checked out, um, probably because they were deciding if they wanted to. So I was there and she had that, this, she had a, um, a special colorway, which she had dyed, like her last ever colorway. And she had some other yarn, uh, and they were all going through this cycle of not being available. And then I went away and I came back and I had the webpage open, I went away and it still wasn't available. I thought, okay, well, it's just not gonna happen. And then it came available and it had many skeins available. So I just thought, this is a fingering weight yarn blend. And I just thought, well, I'll try and see if I put three skeins into my car, are there three, you know. Also her yarn was very good value in my opinion. Um, and they were available and I got three skeins. So I have a sweaters quantity. I'm thinking I'll make a cardigan with this of her final ever colorway, which was called Dawn of a New Day. This is her card. So um, it's the, her barefoot sock and uh, which is an 80-20 uh, merino nylon blend, which is one of my favorites. And I have three skeins. And, and I wouldn't have bought it if it was any old color. I really loved that it was light and it had uh, predominantly a blue feel to it, which is my comfort zone. And I saw it and I thought that it would make a good sweater. It would make a beautiful, you know, fingering weight, maybe like a Madewell or something. Um, I might make it into a sort of a sweater, but I was thinking more cardigan. I don't know why when I see this sort of pale and, you know, very speckled yarn, it makes me think of a cardigan. Um, anyway, so I got that um, a while ago. And these skins, they're so, it's so plump and squishy. I mean, it almost feels, it doesn't have the feel of a 75, a classic 75, 25 um, sock yarn, which is not, it's really not my favorite. Um, I often find they feel quite thin. This one does not feel um, thin at all. It's not super high twist, uh, which is my very favorite, but it does have a lovely plump, um, plump feel to it and it's very soft, almost MCN soft kind of feel. So it was sort of bittersweet that uh, the first yarn I ever got from her is also the last yarn I will ever be able to get from her. I heard that she, um, I don't know if she felt that dyeing had run, her, run its course with her. I mean, she was very popular. Her yarn is beautiful, um, but apparently she wants to focus on other things. And I think particularly photography, I heard, was um, something that she wanted to do. So um, another thing that I picked up, so that all the rest of the yarn I'm going to show you, I picked up from a Swiss uh, yarn. It's a yarn shop and she's a, a yarn dyer. So she sells both her own hand dyed yarn, but also um, stocks other yarn. It is, I believe, a physical shop in Bern, in Zurich, in Zurich. 
in Bern in Switzerland. Bern is the official capital of Switzerland. I have never been there. Um, but she also has an online shop and um, which is very easy to navigate. So the name of the, I realize everything is in plastic. Let's try and take this out without making a ton of noise. Sorry. Um, the name of her company is, um, so in German, this should be CD Spint. And I bought, firstly, so I, she had a sales section. I have to say her yarn, so in Switzerland, I haven't about, spoken about this before. In Switzerland, if you go to a yarn shops, as is the case with many products in Switzerland, everything costs a bit more than you would, um, than sort of retail value in other countries. Um, and I think it's a combination of something being imported in Switzerland and the fact that everything costs a bit more in Switzerland. People expect things to cost more or people are willing to pay more. So the expected price of something is always 20 to 30% more than um, often in a lot of other European countries. That's not true for absolutely everything, but it's, I would say, a general rule, um, especially with respect to Germany, which is you know, right nearby and where things generally, um, even compared to the UK, I would, so also compared to the UK, would are pretty cheap, I would say. Anyway, so often you can see um, yarns, which are often German or Italian in origin, and I know that they cost 30% less or even less than that if you buy them in Italy or in Germany. So I'm generally put off from buying too much in shops here. I do buy some things, and when they have sales, that can be um, really convenient. But I was quite impressed when I looked, saw on her website the cost of her yarn, which was very much in line with other um, hand-dyed yarn producers around Europe, I would say. Um, and she had a sales section. She had some things that she was um, clearing out, and they were really really competitive, really good value in my opinion. So the yarn that I picked up from her is, um, this base is called, so I was told by somebody that this is called Merino Cablé. Here there's no accent, but the last time I saw this yarn, it said Cablé with an accent on the E, so instead of cable, but the point is it's a special, specially plied yarn, which I believe is a three ply, or it's like a plied yarn, which is then plied again. I can't remember. Anyway, it's meant to, it, get, it gives very good stitch definition. It's a very round yarn. And that you can see just by looking at it. It's really, really round, um, the, the, end, the final yarn itself. And um, so it's meant to be very good for cables and stitch definition um, and the like. So maybe that, for that reason, it is called Merino Cable. Anyway, um, the price that's written on there is wrong because this is the undyed yarn. So this costs less in the first place and then it was reduced. So I think I got this for about 10 francs a skein, um, which is very good value. That's like seven pounds. And this is 100 grams of 100% merino. It's really, really beautiful. I actually was thinking of writing to her to ask if this was superwash. I believe it is. It doesn't say on the tag, but I believe it's superwash just from the feel of it. Anyway, so I picked up a couple of skeins of this. I, I, for the project I'm planning, I only really needed one, but it was such good value. And I thought, well, it's a natural color yarn. Um, and this, she listed it as a DK. It's, 100, it's 250 meters for 100 grams. So I would say it is a DK, but you know, it's like a sport DK. It's not like a DK worsted. So I picked up this and to go with it, I picked up three skeins in her um, um, Stein, which is stone colorway which is beautiful, it's hand dyed, you can see the tonality there, it's a lovely warm grey. Um, and so that's going to go together with just one skein of this. And the project that I'm planning to knit with this is, so I did buy this for a specific project, this is the Serafina top. This is by Irina Anikeva, or Keva, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce the double E um, from um, Russian names. And she is a wonderful designer. So she goes under the name of um, Irmian Design. And she is a very prolific designer. And she has a lot of designs featured in Vogue and Interweave and really, really beautiful designs. And a while back, a month ago, a month or so ago, to celebrate, I don't remember what exactly, but to celebrate something, she had a great sale where if you bought, I think it was three or more patterns, then they were 50% off. I think that was the deal. Anyway, so I bought at least three of her patterns. Um, and this is one of, one of them. So anyway, it's this beautiful top. Um, if I show you, 
I don't know. Some people, some people show schematics and uh, depending on how detailed the schematic is, it can tell you a lot about the design. So sometimes I'm, I'm reluctant to show schematics. Uh, but you can see on the shoulder it has this beautiful um, lace running down the top of the shoulder to the sleeve and then the rest of the top has this slightly textured detail and it ultimately has a sort of drop shoulder look to it. So my plan was to do the lace, so you knit these lace panels separately, um, to knit those in the white, the natural white, and the rest of the garment would be in this grey. So this is written for a sport weight yarn. I think she, her sample here is um, Plucky Knitter Primo Sport. Yes. And that is a yarn which has exactly the same put up as this. So 250 meters for 100 grams. So I'm kind of, I'm pretty confident. I think the gauge here is 24, there's 23 stitches over four inches, 10 centimeters. So I'm thinking this is a pretty, I have actually some Plucky Knitter Primo Sport in my stash. I have one skein of it, and um, I would say they're very, very similar. Also, that's a very beautifully round, uh, round yarn. So yeah, this will be a sweater. And I just checking the amounts here. Um, of course, this is all meant to be done in one colour. Um, so, but I'm confident that one skein of this is going to be enough to make a couple of lace panels. That's that I'm not worried about. For the size that I wanted to make. Um, it's pretty oversized, so I and I'm not really an oversized person, so I'm tempted to even make the extra small. I have to check that that's going to work with the sleeve sizes and what have you. That that's not going to be too tight, because it'll be fine for the bust. But so I may have to make it small. But total yarn amounts um, in any case for either of those is less than a thousand. Um, is less than a thousand meters. So I'm confident that. Um, I'm co very confident, let's say, that um, I have 750 meters of this. So I'm pretty confident that that's going to be enough for what I'm going to make. I mean, the size that I wanted to make is actually 900 meters in total. So, fingers crossed. I kind of thought that if I start to run out, then perhaps I can also do the collars and the, you know, the um, trimmings, the ribbing edges, also in the natural color. So that is dream knitting plus uh, stash enhancement and uh, pattern stash enhancement. So yeah, again, that's the Serafina top. And the final uh, piece of stash enhancement that I have is again from the same sale, from the same website. And actually the yarn I have coming in the um, mail today is also from the same website, from the same producer. So this is all her hand dyed yarn. This again was in the sale and I just couldn't resist. I'm on a heavier weight uh, shawl kick in just in terms of what I'm wanting. You know, I designed that one where I was holding fingering weight double. That's going into testing next week, still nameless. And I'm knitting on um, a, this worsted weight one at the moment and this yarn. This is a bit more, this was not cheap, um, but it was reduced again. And so it was down, this is a DK weight BFL, so 70% BFL, 20% silk, 10% cashmere. The colorway is Winter Himmel, which means winter sky. Um, so this is 100 gra 15 grams, 115 grams, 230 meters. And I have, I bought all three skeins that she had left of this. This is totally my jam. It's beautiful <sighs> gray with this blue. And um, I mean, for such a luxury blend, um, again, I said I got it reduced, um, but I think I paid 20 francs per skein for this, which translates to around 15 pounds, which is a total, which I think for BFL cashmere silk, hand dyed, is a total bargain. So this, I am, I already know I'm going to design my first ever top-down triangular shawl. So I'm going to say now I'm going to change my mind. I really want this to be a triangular shawl. All triangular shawls I have ever designed or knit because I've never knit a triangular shawl that I did not design yes that's true um none of them are top down classic you know start up here finish down here and a lot of the designs I have sketched out in my mind for doing triangular shawls all avoid that so some of them start bottom up so they have a ton of stitches but you reduce um so I might do something like that but I'm I'm pretty sure I'm going to make a top-down triangular shawl with this. Don't know exactly what, um, 
constantly tempted to wind these up and get started, but that's not happening. I have a you know heavyweight shawl on the needles right now, so this will have to wait. But I just think it's it's, it's spectacular. Um, and it's funny when I get yarns that I love so much, I always feel like I have to skein them up immediately, skein them up, cake them up immediately, so I can see how they look in the cake. For me, only once I've seen a yarn in the cake do I. Um, feel like I have a confident idea. This is of course for hand dyed, um, not just tonal yarn, but hand dyed in a variegated or speckled sense. Um, an idea of exactly how it's gonna look and what I want to do with it. But anyway, I thought I'd unskein this for you so you can have a look. I think we're all agreed that it's, fan it's fantastic. And it feels amazing. It doesn't feel, you know, it has a beautiful sheen to it. It feels very soft, but it doesn't have, it doesn't feel ridiculously soft. Um, you know, because it's got the BFL there, um, and I really, really, really love it. And I think it's going to have some really nice stitch definition. Obviously, it's a variegated yarn, so I'm not going to do something super patterned, but I think that it's the way it is, you can do some patterning with it. So I'm thinking some kind of cable lace is what I was thinking it's going to look beautiful. I'm so bad at skeining yarn, so bad. I would be a terrible dyer. I would be a terrible dyer for many reasons. It appeals to me from the point of view that I'm a chemist and there's a lot of chemistry involved and I love all that experimenting type stuff and I like to cook and bake. So from that point of view, it would be good. From many other point of views, I think I would be a terrible dyer. Okay. I'm just gonna cuddle these yarns and I'm gonna say that that's everything for this week. Um, I hope to be back with you relatively soon. Um, I don't have a crazy busy schedule the next couple of weeks and then things will start to go a bit awry. So then I really have no idea what my schedule will be like. I do plan to take a trip to the UK with my kids to visit my uh, family back there and hopefully that will mean I will be able to podcast from there because I'll have people to look after the kids so that should be fine. But maybe I'll just won't find the time because there'll be too many other things to do. And from the, um, and from that point onwards, I have no idea what's happening with our schedule for the rest of the summer. But I will do whatever I can to fit in podcasts as and when um, and keep you updated on what I'm doing and uh, with the cows. And I will certainly be pulling for that giveaway and announcing, at least doing a video to announce the winner of the Knit Crate um, giveaway. So until next time, I wish you all uh, very well. Plenty of happy knitting time and yarny goodness. Um, and... If you so wish, please do um, click like or comment down the video down below. Uh, and if you haven't yet, uh, do click subscribe. Okay, bye.